Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Change the battery here in the controller for <clears throat> for those. Forgive me, I'm, I'm a little hoarse this morning. I'm up before the sun is up. It is literally 6 a.m. and I have to hit the road. So I have to take care of you guys before I get on to my day job. So I appreciate each and every one of you guys being here. So let's get on to it. It is hump day. It is the middle of the week. It is when the Dallas Cowboys get back out on the field. And then we'll start getting a taste of who's going to be playing and who's not going to be playing. Um, we're hearing that there's a good chance that Tyron Smith is back on the field, that the big guy, his foot, he has the bone spur as well as the ankle uh, sprain, is going to be beginning to practice and trying to work his way back on the field. What that means, of course, is that Terrence Steele is now being kicked back to the right side where it'll be between him and and Lyle Collins for the starting right tackle position, which is crazy to think about that we'd finally get both of our tackles starting in Lyle Collins and um, Tyron Smith, but Terrence Steele has played so good, so good, in fact, that it may be he becomes the starter over Lyle Collins. We'll have to watch this week in practice to see who becomes the starter for the right side. Um, either way, it's great because you'll remember we had uh, Ty Nasecki, who seems to be dropped off on the curb, um, was the veteran presence at uh, left tackle. And he's not even mentioned as far as getting playing time. And before that, of course, we had Brandon, uh, Brandon Knight, who, of course, we thought was, okay, better than Terrence Steele. But, of course, Terrence Steele became the man of Steele and a guy that the Dallas Cowboys can't seem to live without. Now, for the Cowboys, we have, of course, the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, this could be the return of Pat Mahomes. We have to find out, is the Kansas City Chiefs back on track? They're actually back to leading the division where everybody thought that they should be. But they seem to have a lot of flaws, and Pat Mahomes is not quite the Pat Mahomes that we've been used to. He has turned over the ball quite a bit, and the Kansas City defense is bad. However, you're talking about a team that has been to the last two Super Bowls winning one. So don't sleep on somebody that has that experience. We also have former Dallas Cowboy players that may end up looking for a little revenge on the Cowboys. And as we talk about the return of Tyron Smith, and hang on, I need some more coffee here. I could use like a coffee IV right now. Just let it just drip into my veins. Just let it just roll right in there and just get that boost right away. Surprisingly, the Dallas Cowboys defense is a top 10. They are top 10 scoring defense. That's right. Hard to believe. The Dallas Cowboys. They're top five in takeaways. They're fourth. They're 15 in giving up yards. But if you're taking the football away and you're keeping the other team from scoring more points, then it's a formula for winning. Um, we also are looking at getting a boost. Of course, we lost Randy Gregory last week. He'll be gone this week and as far as next week for Thanksgiving and hopefully come back. But we may be getting DeMarcus Lawrence back. The one thing, when you look at the statistics for the Cowboys, the Cowboys are second in the NFL taking the football away. Um, it's from an interception standpoint. Um, Diggs with his eight interceptions, uh, Anthony Brown with his three, you know, Jordan Lewis getting one last week. Um, you've got guys that are becoming ball hawks, and we are becoming the new uh, Great Wall of Dallas. No, not Great Wall of Dallas. Um, excuse me, Doomsday Defense or – Legion of Doom. I, I don't know. We're, we, we, we're, we're at the point where we can start coming up with a name for this defense. But clearly, Dan Quinn has got them rocking and rolling. The one area where on the defense, 
you look at and say, okay, we could do better than this, is fumbles, getting fumbles. We're only 22nd at getting fumbles. And that's one of those things that you look at Demarcus Lawrence when he's rushing on the edge, when he is out there and he is swatting that big hand at that quarterback. He is a fumble magnet. And it'll be great to actually see how Micah Parsons has come along um, in getting that pressure if Demarcus Lawrence is back anywhere close to where Demarcus Lawrence has played. If we get that between the two of those, then probably you'll end up seeing more Micah Parsons as a middle linebacker, but he is that guy that you don't know where he's going to be coming from. You could really see them causing havoc especially when they get Randy Gregory back. And so the other good thing about DeMarcus Lawrence is, and I've compared Micah Parsons' numbers to DeMarcus Lawrence a lot, and it wasn't that I was trying to show shade on DeMarcus Lawrence. It was more of trying to show you how great Micah has been playing. And now we put the combination of those two together. Dan Quinn's going to be able to do all kinds of crazy stuff, because imagine this. Imagine you have Micah Parsons on the strong side linebacker. You got D Law on there ready to rush. And you creep Micah Parsons up on the line right outside of uh, D Law. Can you imagine a quarterback shitting his pants? I mean, literally. You get the two of them side by side rushing in and you only have a tight end and a tackle, I'll take that all day. They will be hunting. They will be terminating quarterbacks. And that's what I want to see against Micah Parsons. Because, see, here's the key. What you want to be able to do, and if you look at the numbers, Dak Prescott has been deadly against the Blitz. Dak Prescott is the only quarterback with over 10 TDs against the Blitz. He's got 15. And there's a couple of reasons for this. If you can stand the pressure, first, okay, there's several reasons. First, if you have an offensive line that can pick up the blitz and you have a great running back who can also, you know, jack up the blitzer, the advantage is now on the offense because now the quarterback has time against less defensive players. And, you know, people, you can look and say, it's all Dak. I'm not saying Dak is... You know, great because he's dodging people left and light. It's also because of the offensive line and Zeke Elliott who picks up that blitzer. It's a combination together, and that's why he's got so much, so many touchdowns. It's not just Dak. But you have to be cool under pressure and be able to make that play. Not everybody has that. A lot of them will shit down their pants. When you can get pressure without the blitz, let me say it again. When you can put pressure on the quarterback without the blitz, you now have more men in the secondary than you have receivers. And that leaves the advantage on the defense. So if you can get Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons able to put pressure on the quarterback while you still have numbers, that is a recipe for taking away the football. And I believe that Demarcus Lawrence coming back is going to have that effect. We'll have to see how it works and how they work each other in. They may end up being, you know, gentle, letting him in, you know, having him on a pitch count where we're only going to keep him in a certain number of plays to try and make sure that we don't, you know, overwork him because he hasn't been out on the field since week one. You have to be excited about having him come back and the possibility of Tyron Smith as well. As other teams are losing players left and right, we're – getting reinforcements, Michael Gallup back, you know, Cedric Wilson could be starting. Hell, Cedric Wilson been playing better than um, Odell Beckham Jr. You know, I think that would have been a better move for the Rams than Odell at this point. You're getting Tyron Smith back, which means you got a guy who's got starting experience and, and Terrence Steele, you know, sitting on the bench or kicking a starter, a veteran, to the curb. You're getting a Demarcus Lawrence back, which has ended up, you know, changing the dynamics of what you can do with that multi-tool guy, Micah Parsons. This is freaking insane. And this week, 
it'll be it'll almost be a no win situation for the Cowboys. If the Cowboys lose, of course they'll say the Cowboys are ass. They're not ready for Pat Mahomes and Dak Prescott stinks. Or if we win, they'll say, yeah, but this isn't really the Kansas City Chiefs that we know. You know, that's you, you can hear the narrative already. No matter what we do, it won't be good enough. So, you know what? Cowboys, just keep brushing it off and just keep doing what you're doing. And in the meantime, I'm going to pump some more coffee in me and I'm going to hit the road. I'll be checking out uh, NFL tiers. We'll see, of course. We, we know uh, he'll be pumping up the Kansas City Chiefs and um, still probably belittling the Cowboys. But it's time to roll. Our folks here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. <laughs>